a um want to see something cool really long legs go ahead let your inner eight-year-old go wild you can't look at one of these unique creatures without taking a momentary detour back to your childhood when flipping over rocks and logs was the magic portal to adventure <laughs> well, guess what there's still something magical about it today these tiny animals are special they're called big level salamanders chances are you've never seen one before you might not ever get the chance to see one again after this story is over. Their range is pretty limited. You can only find them in one place, Virginia, and even then, they're confined to a few select mountaintops in the Big Levels region of the Blue Ridge. You know, these salamanders have been isolated up here for however many hundreds of thousands of years or however long they've been here. All the research suggests that where the salamander is located, they are, they are doing very well. When you talk to salamander experts, you're gonna hear a term used, it's sky islands. So what's a sky island? Well, it may conjure up visions of the movie Avatar with those rocks that kind of floated in the sky. But what we're talking about are those mountaintops over there. Each one is its own ecosystem. And when it comes to salamanders, they are vital. And they all have that same kind of ecological niche. They're all high elevation, isolated mountaintops. Uh, there's, you know, highly vulnerable to climate issues, uh, obviously because of their environmental constraints, they're not going to move down the mountain and across the valley and back up the other side. That's, so they're, they're, they are where they are, and, they're, and they only have one way to go, and that's going to be up, and they can't go up. I think I got one. Got one, maybe? So they are watched, studied, and protected when necessary. And you could make the argument that it's always necessary. Though big level salamanders are small, they have a big impact on Virginia's unique ecosystem. Some of these uh, uh, plethodontid salamanders or woodland salamanders, more commonly referred to, uh, there's literally thousands of them per acre. Um, and so they're consuming thousands and millions of insects every year. Uh, they're tilling through the soil. Uh, they're food for a variety of animals, uh, everything from bears and turkeys to uh, ringneck snakes and other birds. Uh, so uh, yeah, they, they, their, their value to these systems is uh, probably grossly underestimated. While they are isolated, and that isolation has helped the big level salamanders to thrive, they still have to share space with people. When we visit the places they live. While they're cool to look at, and the people who manage our wildlife resources want you to be proud of and enjoy them, try to avoid picking them up. But if you do pick one up, never move them away from where you found them. And if you flipped over a rock or log, enjoy the moment, but put things back the way you found them. There are some ethics to your activities out there, and that's where you want to minimize the damage that you're doing or not leave any damage whatsoever. So if you flip a rock, log or you flip a rock, you try to put it back into place just as you found it because it takes years for that little microhabitat to develop underneath that rock or log that's suitable for that salamander. So if you flip it over and leave it unflipped, it's going to dry out and you've lost that microhabitat for that particular animal. I'm going to have eggs soon. I'll probably uh, put her back okay. in case that's the situation. Yeah. I'm going to log now.